Good day and welcome to the WANA webinar series. As you will notice, all participants have been muted. To enable multi-language closed captioning, please select the CC icon in the bottom left of your WebEx window. We have added a few notes within the chat window to enhance your webinar experience, such as changing your closed captioning language, how to submit a question, participating in the meeting polls, and how to reach us for technical support. Select the chat icon at the bottom right of your screen to review these features and to engage with fellow members on today's topics. We welcome questions throughout the event using the Q&A panel. These questions will be addressed after all presentations have concluded. Thank you for joining and please welcome Michael Hamlin from Fountain House in New York. You may begin. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Michael Hamlin from Fountain House in New York, a member of Fountain House in New York. And um, so uh, we just want to say welcome again to the WANA webinar series. Um, today we present Make It Work, Collaboratively Designing Clubhouse Spaces to Optimize Community Engagement. So at Fountain House, we discuss this topic as social design. Um, it's a tool we use to intentionally create community and in turn facilitate a sense of empowerment and recovery. Um, as a member of the Clubhouse International faculty, I've seen clubhouses look for creative ways to effectively and collaboratively implement social designs that will foster and build community. <clears throat> Today, we bring you two clubhouses, Gateway in Greenville, South Carolina, and Clubhouse Lyon in Lyon, France, that have really inspiring and informative stories to tell about designing clubhouse space effectively, collaboratively, and making it work for, for their communities. So first we'll hear from our friends at uh, Gateway. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Sally. And I'm William. And we are excited to talk about, um, about space. Yeah. Yes. So we're gonna start off. Well, let's start with some clubhouse standards to talk about space. So before we start talking about the how, we want to talk about the why and the what. Isolation can be dev devastating outside and inside the clubhouse. So engaging members, that is the what. Structure is a way to build a roadmap to empower members. This is the how. So let's talk about designing our space. Uh, four key strategies we've learned. For each of these strategies, we'll also talk about practical tips. First, organize and accessible to facilitate a work order day. Uh, designing a space to be inviting. And then designing space to facilitate side-by-side -side teamwork. And designing space to be attractive, convey Respect and dignity. So let's break it down further into some practical tips. Um, practical tip number involve the entire clubhouse. And then remember standard 18, you guys. Um, use unit meetings to brainstorm space together. Designing space to be organized and accessible. So practical tip number one here. Is it visible? Um, helpful tools. Use use of needs lists, whiteboards, computers, task checklist, and workstations. Take a look at what's on your walls. <laughs> uh, yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Take a look at what's on your walls. Can you walk into a space and understand its purpose? Yeah. Remember unit meetings as a great way to and identify structure brainstorm together to develop new ways to accomplish the work to arrange the space to make that happen. Yes, make the work accessible. Here's some practical tips here. So do we think, how do we break down complex tasks so that lots of people can work together to accomplish all of the complex work that we do? For example, accounting, member bank, uh, you may see a, a picture where there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people working together in the member bank, and they balance thousands of dollars every day. It's important clubhouse work. Um, and the way we arrange our space and structure helps us to do that every single day. 
Practical tip number two is to work consistent. Yeah, are there clear deadlines? How does our space support this? Do we have designated workstations to support the unit daily structure? Practical tip number four, three, is the word meaningful. Yeah, does it blend? All right, so strategy number two, um, make every clubhouse space inviting. How do we design our space to be inviting? Let's break that down into further practical tips. Okay, let's break it down. The first space everyone walks into when we are as we arrive. The reception area is the entire is the entrance bite and inviting. Yeah, so some practical design things to think about. Um, is there good lighting, bright colors? Is it clean and organized? Do we have the right tools? Do we have a table where people can greet everyone as they walk in? where people can sign in, all of those structure things you think about in the design, and then how that supports member roles in the unit. Okay, strategy tip number three, make all your workspaces designed a collaborative side-by-side -side teamwork. Yeah, so let's break this down into some uh, further practical tips. So think about moving furniture. Sometimes moving the furniture to arrange it so we can work side-by-side. You know, so there are computer stations or food prep stations where lots of folks can work together. Um, think about that. Think about the flow of activity. Think about does the furniture make sense for the space? Does it allow for an, for several people to work together in that space? And think about those things as you're looking through your all of your spaces and how to design and organize them. Okay, strategy number four, make all unit spaces attractive. Spaces that give respect and dignity. Okay, and then uh, four, making all unit spaces attractive, spaces that give a sense of dignity and respect. Some practical tips here. One, is it organized? Get some organizing tools. Um, use your organizing tools. This really helps to support accessibility of the clubhouse work and space. Fresh flowers and live plants, nice dining room, rolled silverware and cloth napkins for dining room and porcelain plates. Yep. And then nice having nice furniture. Um, you can budget for this. You can get donations for this. Um, you can get grants for this. And all that is great unit work all, as well. Um, making sure also that you have good equipment and tools to do the work uh, as part of dignity and respect. And then one um, more pro tip, if you want to know if, if your space is attractive, uh, do a tour and it really opens your eyes to how your space looks from an outsider view. Fresh flowers on every table, pro tips. You can grow your own flowers, this is great unit work. You can get donations, this is great unit work. All right, so now we are going to jump into talking about our new clubhouse space. Um, so four, four steps in our process for this. Yes, uh, the first one is internal discussions and planning, community partners and contracts, fundraising, our transitional strategy, engaging and empowering our clubhouse community. Right, so we're going to talk through each of those four steps. So. Phase one, designing our new, of new, designing our new space. Um, we discussed in house meetings, in unit meetings for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, what what are our pain points, our challenges of our current space? More space. Uh, outgrowing our old space. Yeah, we definitely were outgrowing our old space. Um, and then another challenge was functionality of the space. We had uh, spaces that were not always conducive to the work. Um, some spaces were a bit too noisy for the work, for example, the media work and the clerical work, um, and it didn't support all of the functions that we wanted it to support. So we also discussed in our unit meeting and house meetings for weeks and weeks and weeks, not only what are our current challenges, but what do we want in a new clubhouse space? What do we want to accomplish through building a new clubhouse space? Well, one of the things is, is room for growth, spaces that are attractive and open, how to keep connected in a space twice as big, 
spaces that can help us accomplish the work order, work order today collaboratively in a professional kitchen. Yeah. And then we also wanted to make sure we had a building that enhanced the neighborhood around us. And that gave the message of dignity and transforming our community um, and bringing value because that's what clubhouses do every day. So this guys, this is really, really important and was important to our process. When we hired an architect, he didn't start drawing. He actually spent two solid weeks in our clubhouse and he spent two weeks getting to know us. He spent two weeks learning about our design or of, of our community, of what we needed as a community, as a clubhouse, things that were unique. Um, so we all got to know that's Dean and the yellow vest. Everyone got to know Dean. He got to know all of us really well and to know what was important to us as a clubhouse community um, before he ever started drawing uh, any, any part of the new clubhouse design. So that was really important. And then we also, in terms of community, um, we had neighborhood events where we invited the neighbors to come to get to know for our new neighborhood that would get to know our plans for our new space, to know about the clubhouse community, to hear, hear their thoughts, and to be really proactive in getting their support. Okay, next step in our process designing a new clubhouse space is fundraising. So, uh, so for the first time in our over 30 something years, we started a capital campaign. Uh, to do this, we recruited a dedicated board um, that was focused on this capital campaign. We hired a capital campaign manager. We did marketing and then tours, tours, tours. We got lots of people coming in, community leaders, people to understand what the value of the clubhouse community was to this city. Pro tip, when you're seeking funding, remember standard number 13. And look for the funding that allows the clubhouse to have its own space. All right. Our final strategy for uh, our new clubhouse is internal get steps for engaging and empowering a clubhouse community. Yeah, so we had we built an intentional transition strategy, um, and that was really important. The intentionality of that, um, we we wanted to really empower and engage our clubhouse community, everybody. Um, and some of us had been in the old space for a really long time and had built some really precious memories. And we wanted to be ready for this new change and be excited for this new change and be part of this new change. So there's lots of things we did to make that happen within our transitional strategy. Um, so in addition to, as we talked about building, designing the clubhouse space together, dreaming together about what we wanted, um, reviewing the architect's plans and making revisions as a whole entire clubhouse community. There were several other things that we did. Well, one of the things we did, we had a groundbreaking ceremony. Yeah, so staff and members planned and executed the ceremony together along with our board. We invited our, our mayor to be there. Several of our significant donors were there, as well as lots of other community folks. We also had hard hat visits. Okay, so one of the things we also did is we had uh, pictures on all of our TVs showing mm -hmm. the plans, the architecture plans, so that everybody could be looking at it. And we had, we regularly were looking at the construction as it was happening. We watched the building go up together. Um, and we talked about that process. It was very visible. We had it on our Facebook Live um, clubhouse community so that all of us were talking about and thinking about all this process. Not only that, we had hard hat visits. Yes, lots of visits as the building was going up to see the progress, um, to, to build lots of ownership and excitement for what was coming for our clubhouse community. Mm -hmm. um, we literally moved together. Yeah, so we all packed up our old clubhouse together um, and arranged the new space together. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we had a big 
ribbon cutting ceremony after we had moved in. Um, we were really excited about that. We had uh, people donate time to help us with the sound system. We had the mayor speak. And then we also had our Lieutenant Governor here and she spoke as well as our founding directors. Um, so it was a really big, exciting, wonderful celebratory event. And we did all of this in the height of COVID um, because it was exciting and it was important. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to move into a new clubhouse space um, and to do it in a really wonderful, wonderful yes. way. And so that is it. We are so excited about our new space. Yes. Um, the transition you see on the left, our old space, and then our, our new space. Um, so if you are ever in the South Carolina area, we invite you to come for a tour. Of course. And then, yes. of course, visit our website to see some more pictures. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so next up, um, thank you very much, um, uh, folks at Gateway. And um, so I guess we'll move right along to um, Clubhouse Leon so they can share their story of collaboratively designing space. Hi, everyone. Really happy to see you today. Uh, today I'm with uh, Christelle Hello. and Florent and Julien. And you are. And we and I am Francois, and we are we come from uh, Lyon, from Clubhouse Lyon, and uh, we are in France. We are six years old, and we moved uh, in a new place uh, in March two thousand twenty-three. So we will share with you today about uh, the process that we done uh, what that we've done uh, in our clubhouse from planning to designing to moving all, keeping in mind uh, all the member needs and uh, the organization needs. Okay. So we started to feel the urge to move within five years of living in a flat became, that was becoming too small. We feared not to be able to welcome more members. We had trouble cooking, working in a, in a noisy environment, and we wanted to fulfill our long time wish to have a garden. Next, please. So we had to find a place by the, by before March 20, 2023, because uh, the rental contract was going uh, at the end. Uh, we wanted to have uh, an outside space. We wanted to be located in the city center or at least near the train station. And uh, we were looking for a place, a place that all the members could appreciate and also that fulfilled uh, the member needs. Um, and uh, we tried and we hoped that uh, you know, the community hoped that all members will follow because some members were afraid to move uh, in the new place. But I think we've done uh, great. All right, so moving out is always a hard task. It is even harder when you have uh, high expectations like we had, and also that you live in a city that is as saturated as uh, Lyon. Uh, so it took us two years between looking around the whole greater Lyon for an opportunity and financing the actual transaction. transaction. Members and staff have been involved in the definition of the specifications. Also visiting the real estate with the staff and following the specific training at Fountain House. Also, we did the fundraising all together. So then it became real. We hired an architect in September 22 and started working on a project that was following the early designs of the club. We tried, we tried, we tried, sorry, we tried and, un and unrolled most of the community into the process of moving out by co-designing the project and preparing all the tasks until the big day. Incredible craftsmen started to work at the building site and it took three months to deliver. First of March, we moved in and it went seamless. We were ready. Clubhouse Lyon isn't still a finished place today. We are still lending in, 
getting the new uses and making it our own. Okay, so before and after. Before we had 250 square meters and we were renting the, the, what was uh, two flats uh, brought together. Today we, lived, we live in an office building that is near the subway and we have 500 square meters and we own the place. Uh, before we had 220 members max and today we are moving to have two units uh, that will host 300 members. We went from 25 to 35 members a day and we, we are welcoming five new members a month like before. So here you have a, a, a picture of before that was you see at the back the small kitchen you see where we are eating so uh, so you see it was very crowded. Next, today, we have the, you can see the same four big tables, but we, that are today very far and we can have a lot more people. This is the, the, the main room where, where we do the work all of the day. Okay, so I will share with you about what we've done in New York during our uh, training with Augustin. So in June 2022, we lived in New York and we knew that we will have a new place. And so we left with one question, how we could not lose anyone in the process of moving in a new place and how to engage all our community in this process. This was our question. And we've been working a lot with Augusta, trying to like ask questions to all the members of uh, New York Clubhouse. And uh, we came back with four ideas. The first about engage how to engage the community. The second one, how to inform them. And also the third one, how to communicate towards all our partners. And then how to explain why the new place will be very good. And when we came back, so we shared all together these ideas during a team building that we've done in the south of France. And we did our own action plan to move on the new place. So the first point, how to engage people. So we've created one small coordinator group with the director, one staff, two members and one fundraiser. The, the aim was to coordinate all the work that we've done. And then we had five groups of work. One to plan everything, one to design the place, uh, one to build a, a great network and to uh, communicate around, and, um, and one group for the movers uh, to move all the old place to the new one. So we've done a big work about design social, and fundraising as well, we've done like we had some members and they've been working with our fundraiser, uh, contacting a lot of uh, enterprise, social enterprise in Lyon. Uh, like we've been contacting more and more enterprise and asking them, could you, could you help us to, uh, to fundraise our new place? And we've been collecting a, uh, like nearly half of the, the budget we had. Uh, thanks to this part of the job. And we did also a lot of connection with other clubhouses in the world to share about the process to move on. It was really interesting. And all this work, we've been trying to engage as much as possible all our members. Florent, just next to me, is an architect. And so he's been working with the, the architect we paid for, for the job. Uh, they've been working together. It was really nice. And all our members were uh, working in this process. It was really great. One of the ideas that was really important uh, when we spoke with uh, and when we share with uh, New York in our training is that we had to keep the spirit of our club from the new one, uh, the old one, uh, to the new one. And here you can see some pictures uh, that. Uh, like you see a map, you see some pictures uh, on the upper side, on the right. Uh, you can see some pictures of members. 
And all of these things we brought from the old place to the new place. Uh, and you can see like something that uh, allow the members to feel confident in the new place because uh, it seems to be similar as the old place, but it's the new one. Okay, this is the main room. And this is an example uh, of uh, the room where we are now. Uh, from like at the beginning, it was like that. And the group of members who was working on designing the place, they work on uh, choose the color of the wall behind me and also uh, uh, like on the ground, the floor, and everything was designed by the members. Everything was chosen by the members, and then we ask our architect to do as we decided. Okay, and then uh, we try to inform our community. Uh, it was also like a big walk where we engage all our community in this work. We had team meeting and team building as Gateway Clubhouse. Uh, uh, one time a week, we were sharing all the informations, grabbing some ideas from the community, and also we've tried to uh, build flyer, brochure, maps and newspaper to communicate toward all our uh, members and community. And one time a week, we've done also a visit of the new place. So this is during the visits. And this is an example of uh, communication that we've used uh, to like inform all our community that we will move on. Sorry, it's in French. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, communication towards external partners. This is actually a thing that we've not think about this point before we went to uh, uh, New York. And uh, when we've been training, uh, we've been to Bronx Clubhouse and, uh, and they advise us to do more communication towards our external partners because it was really important for them as well to follow us from the old place to the new one. And so when we came back, we shared this idea and the community was really agree with that. This is why we've done as well a, a lot of communication uh, with a lot of flyer and mails towards our partners. Everything was done in uh, the work, inside the work of the day and it was a great job. And uh, we will also uh, organize next year uh, our inauguration day. This is an example of uh, communication we've done with our partners. So the new, place, the new space is very good uh, because it's easily accessible. We are nearby the, the main train station and two subways are coming there. Uh, the community design is much better and now we can have some work uh, done uh, outside. The welcome center, the kitchen is more professional and we have more rooms. And as you know, there is an article called Clubhouse Relationships Needs Work. Now we have more room, more work than more relations. Tu as rien? Je crois que c'est... This is a, a, a 3D map of the 3D plan of the place. So you can see we have uh, an, an upper floor, which is, uh, which is made of uh, six small offices. And downside, we have uh, an enfilade of uh, colorful rooms where we, where we work individually and in small groups. Uh, to the right, we have the multifunctional place, uh, which we can uh, separate in two. I'm going to show you uh, later, and uh, and also the the big kitchen. Merci, Julien. Bon. Okay, our new kitchen, as you see, uh, people are walking in, and uh, it's big, it's bigger. <laughs> and that more interesting. It was just a small room for a small break for the, um, the company before us. And this is exactly the same space that you see on the left before in the kitchen now. Completely uh, rebuilt. Rebuilt. Okay. 
Okay, so now some words about the building site. Uh, next, please. Uh, I want to emphasize that we had a very low budget for the, for the project we had. So the, the project of the architect was very frugal. Uh, so most of the equipment was uh, refurbished, recycled. For example, the, the panel for the walls and the panel of the ceiling. Uh, uh, on the picture on the right, you, you can see the, some of the moisture problem we, we had with the floor. So it's now, uh, it's still a problem, but we, we had to move on. Next slide, please. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, some more building site. Yeah, now, now you can see uh, how we have the partition, uh, the partition wall that can be moved. That's, that's uh, what we use to separate between two units when we are, uh, when we are uh, enough members. Now you see before it was a company doing uh, our content work. It was an open space, a lot of glass. Uh, so we used uh, most of the panels and uh, built some new partitions because the members need uh, more uh, cozy places to work. You can see the, the cursive with uh, the two floors. It's, uh, it's a bit like a boat uh, mm. in, in the club. Okay, some more building. Uh, you can see the colors. Okay, now it's uh, the green room. Okay, next please. Uh, the yellow room <coughs> in which we are now, you can see we can, we can be a lot more members. Uh, it's, a, it's almost like if we had the big room from before in one small room today. Uh, the reception, where we have the cafeteria and where people meet and uh, find themselves during the day. It's where we arrive and where we, uh, where we leave the club. Okay, we are done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, um, Clubhouse Leon. That was great. Um, I'm like thinking about how I've already how I want the things that this has all been making me think about, and that I'd like to say. But now I think we move to um, the Q and A. For those that have a question, please submit your questions in the Q and A panel located in the bottom right side of your WebEx screen. Our first question is. How do you know when it's time to make a change in your space? So, how do you know when it's time to make a change in your space? I guess, um, I think Clubhouse Leon, why don't you take that first? Okay, you hear me? It was quite easy, actually. Uh, the space was not livable as we needed to. Uh, we, we feared a lot that we could not have more members. Because we are, uh, we intend to grow uh, the, the the government wants us to grow. Uh, so uh, so yes, yeah, the, the square meters are uh, very precious to us. And one good indicator too is that it was very very noisy at the end, and a lot of people a lot of people complained about that. And I think it can be an indicator too. Because uh, that you have to move. Yeah, we had a lot of members. Uh, they were uh, speaking with us and share with us that it was a noisy place and uh, they were really tired at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe we closed our clubhouse at 5.30 uh, at the end of the day. And maybe at 2 or 3 p.m. they started to leave because it was too noisy and because they were really, really tired. And so at the end of the day, we didn't have so many, like so much members. And so we knew that we had to change. Otherwise, it will not be a, a good place to engage as much members as possible. So this is, I think, the main reason that we had to leave. Mm -hmm. And as well, I think because uh, uh, the timing was good as, as well, because we had a noisy place, crowded place. We, did, we needed 
more spaces to welcome more members. We had more and more people uh, thinking of they wanted to come in Clubhouse Lyon. So we needed a, a bigger place to welcome everyone. And we also had our rental place, which was going to the end. So the timing was perfect to change as well. Uh, something else I uh, stumbled on. Uh, I think the community was mature also to, to, to envision uh, moving out. Uh, that's how the members followed the, the project of the, of the direction to, to move out. Okay, excellent. And Gateway, do you, I think with your history and uh, having been in your original place for so long, it must have been an important thing. So how did you guys decide to make that change? Yeah, so um, Michael, so we, throughout our, one, throughout our history, we made changes in our old space um, as we were outgrowing it as functionality. We moved things around. Our, our member bank was in the upstairs area, the downstairs area. As we saw that things weren't working well, we made changes within our, our current space. Um, we And we were starting to also outgrow our space. It was a old, old, two old houses that were connected. Um, and we even enclosed the front porch to try to make more space and knocked out walls to make bigger rooms. Um, but we kept outgrowing the space. Our colleague training function, we moved that around to different spaces. Um, but ultimately, we we were outgrowing our space. And just yeah. like Clubhouse Leon, it was becoming um, not, not a little bit of noise is, is good because clubhouses are alive and that's beautiful. But when it's too noisy that you can't focus on the work and you know you need a change. Um, and then looking at our new clubhouse one thing we knew as we were starting to outgrow our current space we also knew the city was growing greenville and with that growth there were going to be more people that would benefit from a clubhouse in our city and we never wanted to be at the point where we said we don't have enough space to welcome you we always wanted to be a welcoming space so we talked for years and years with our board um staff and members talk together about we need to think about the future and this is part of our strategic long-range plan and so we thought about it long before it went into place and that was really important for us no, okay. yeah, we was having more members a day come through we had between 95 up to 110 members a day so we were all growing into space yeah i think that's great that that what this speaks to is just like the need for the need for clubhouse communities, how important they are and how they're always going, they should always be growing so that they can benefit more people. So that's great. Um, next question. How much was your capital campaign and did you hire a consultant to help fundraise? I guess that's the capital campaign, I guess, is speaking directly to Gateway, I think. Um, yeah, so initially we, our goal, oh, there goes our lights. Our goal was five five hundred. Uh, sorry, five million um, was the capital campaign goal. And was there another another part of the question? Sorry. Um, and did you and did you hire a consultant to help fundraise? We yes, we we definitely did that. Yeah. Yeah, that was an important part of the capital campaign was hiring someone who that was their specialty and focus. We're great at clubhouse, um, but that level of millions of dollars fundraising, we needed someone who knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. And clubhouse Leon, can you speak at all to like the. The funds like uh, that you needed for for this project, how that how that came about. Oh uh, yeah, um, I'm not the, the the best person to speak about that because our director was doing uh, like more about this question. But I know that uh, first we had a fundraiser inside our clubhouse, which was before a staff. So uh, she was for two or three years staff, and then she became fundraiser inside our clubhouse, and so she could work with members about this point. And she was working uh, to call and to grab like a, a, a lot of company in Lyon 
which could visit our place and then she asked them to uh, help us like in a, uh, about like a, a financial help. I, I think it's like the needs that we had to, uh, for the whole project was around 2 million because the, 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 we bought the place around 1 million and then we had a lot of work, but I'm not sure it was from one to two million because I'm I'm not really sure about how does it cost then uh, did it cost to to rebuild all the place so we we'll say from one to two million. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, next question. What if we do not have a large open space? How can we design our workstations to facilitate side by side work? Mm, I think uh, I like Gateway. Why don't you take a crack at that? Yeah, sure. So we, it, our old clubhouse was an old house <laughs> um, that we made work. We outgrew that and bought the house next door and then connected the two. So we constantly were moving furniture uh, around. William can tell you. Yes. To facilitate. And sometimes it was even just for uh, 30 minutes. So, for example, in the kitchen unit, we would move all the dining tables next to each other so that we could work together to snap the green beans or to chop the vegetables mm -hmm. working together. So sometimes it's just a matter of moving around furniture. If you don't have a huge kitchen space, you make do with what you have um, and make it work. Or, you know, maybe we would move computers to be next to each other so that people yeah. could work together at a workstation, for example. And so sometimes we, you just, it's a matter of shifting your furniture around and figuring out what works to help a team of people work together as opposed to in isolation. All right. Clubhouse Leon, do you have any thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, actually, we have a, a, a kind of open space in our multifunction room, but no, in Lyon, and perhaps it's more like that in France that, than in the US, we have a, 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 but as you see on the on the plan, we have um, but where, around the seven seven rooms where we can work side by side, but in small group, and uh, it's not too noisy because uh, thanks to the walls, we have uh, another clubhouse in uh, France in Bordeaux. Uh, they moved in a bigger place as us uh, the same year, and they have a uh, big big open space, but we who is uh, very noisy at the moment, and they will. Uh, make some change uh, in the future, but uh, we don't have a big open space, but we can work side by side uh, thanks to the smaller room and it's not too noisy for us. Yeah, I think what is very great here is that we have the choice. We can be in a more flexible space when you are doing uh, the, the data, the accountants, uh, the welcoming, and you can go uh, closer together in smaller rooms which I think are less stressful than the open, than the, the open space. I think as well we have uh, like our main room, our multifunction room uh, is more or less a little, little open space. You know, our clubhouse is only 500 square meters. So, and uh, our multifunction room is about 80 to 100 square meters. So this part of our clubhouse is kind of open space and we have a lot of members walking about like different things but in the same space and we also have another part of our clubhouse where we have different rooms so m the members which are interested to have to to walk on uh, like uh, open space they can go in this uh, multifunction room and the other one can go in the other room i think yeah. it's it's interesting and it's something that we've uh, speaking and shared with all our communities yeah it's about comfort actually yeah, this is an interesting question because I did notice that actually about your clubhouse as well. The, the that it doesn't, it, you know, like it, it, there's not the entire space isn't like the open space. There's some of these, but I think you speak to it well. It's about you know it, the needs of your community. You identified that the needs of your community. You did it together. Members still have choice, right? You mentioned choice. That's what it's about. And it's also about the size of those spaces, like and and what they're being used for, right? Like nobody's probably nobody's like in there by themselves. Right in these little rooms, as if they're like an office for someone. That's what we always try to like, you know, get away from in the clubhouse. But the way you're using them you know, functionally, I think, is is great. 
So, yeah, um, the next question. How long did the process take from inception to move in? Um, I guess that's that could be for both both folks. Um, uh, Leon, you want to start start us off? Sorry, uh, I guess it was. I mean, uh, we started to uh, research a new place uh, on January two thousand twenty-one, and we found uh, and we moved on the new place uh, on March the first of March two thousand twenty-three. Uh, but before researching the place, uh, we were thinking how we could change. And also we were uh, speaking with our community, what will be your needs if we move in a new place? So I guess it's, uh, it, it began a, a bit before January 2021. So it, for me, it's about three years. Something yeah, that like makes that. sense. Yeah, yeah that sounds about. The, oh, yeah. Sorry, the the building site was very quick. Uh, uh, the, the architect and the craftsman managed uh, managed to do it, uh, and the real estate lookout. Uh, I think we ca we could we could not have done it uh, faster, because of the, the situation of Lyon. Yeah, it was really long. I, I mean, we've started to uh, research and and call real estate. We've done, I think, about maybe 20 visits or something like that, 20, 25 visits. And uh, also we had financial restrictions, so it was uh, really difficult to find a, 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 the great place. Uh, so we had maybe one year and a half to find the place about it, and then about six months to buy and rebuild the place. And we've seen it all. We we, uh, we visited some uh, some very weird places, uh, factories, uh, parks, old buildings that we have to rebuild entirely, houses. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, Leon. And then Gateway. Um, so you said you had been like kind of making changes before and thinking about you know change and expansion and but when was the point from when you said okay that's it we we've got to make the move we got to do it from that point to when you actually moved in when was that yeah so we um we talked we have an annual um, board retreat that's board staff members and we talked for several years about the concept of it um but it's, it really, I would say 2018, 2019, um, when, when the actual process yeah. started, um, it took us a while because we built from the ground up our clubhouse. Um, and it was adjacent, one side, one street is, um, there's some businesses, but all behind us is all residential. Yeah. So we had to be in historic districts. So we, it took us time to meet all of those requirements. And in addition, we discovered there was huge rock croppings that had to be um, taken up before the foundation could be built. Mm -hmm. So there were some unique things that we had to deal with and do it in a certain way. Um, so it took a while. We felt like the coming, we had a coming soon sign for our new clubhouse with the design in on the site. And we felt like we were waiting forever. We kept looking at, okay, when are they gonna start the foundation? And they finally did. Um, and then we were able to move in, uh, in August of 2020 was our move-in date, August 17th. Yep. Um, and so we had some unique things because as you guys know, um, COVID was still an issue that the world was dealing with at that time in 2020. Um, and so we had to do things in a very special and unique and cautious way. Um, but as clubhouses always do, we figured it out together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's an interesting note actually about both your stories. They happened like kind of in during that that period. So I, I think that that may I don't know, it may be a, probably a factor in maybe how long some of the things probably took. So, all right, next next question. Is there another question? Um our next question is how can you address your space when attendance is low and there is too much space which discourages people from coming in? Hmm. Gateway, you want to take a crack at that? Uh, well, I think it's important to figure out why are people not coming in? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there can be a multitude of reasons that that happens. Um, maybe we need to think about what is the structure of our work order day. Sometimes it's hard for people to get out of the bed in the mornings. So is it welcoming when they first walk in? Is it a bright, beautiful place where it's welcoming? Are we doing reach out every day? Are we letting people know that they are needed? And does the design of our space help us to work together? Because there's something about working with somebody else that helps us feel better. We are we're hu human creatures are made to be in community. We know this in the clubhouse. You know, long before COVID, we knew this. And so really looking at the structure of how you work in your space and bringing exciting, vibrant work to the day and engaging members in that developing that process is also important. You know, we are developing this together. So um, how the space is, um, how much work, vibrant work throughout the day, remember standard 18 mm -hmm. and 13 um, and look at those. And, and how are how is our space inviting people to the work so that they know that they're needed indeed needed and wanted and valued? Um, and sometimes maybe let's all gather in this space and work together on this thing, and then we'll gather in this space. But in the meantime, we're calling people, we're letting people know that we need them, yeah. and we're building our work order day and building it step by step. So we're working in community and fighting isolation. All right, thank you. Excellent. And uh, next question. Oh, no, Leon, you, you want to add to that? For sure. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I wanted to add that um, our place is very, is made of compartment. So uh, when you're going for the first time, you don't feel the, the bigness of the place. Mm -hmm. And we, we tried a lot to, to encourage that in the project, because before we, we've been, uh, we were in a, in a flat. So it looked, at, it looked very much like a house and people like that. Uh, today we are more in an office type uh, building, but we uh, tried to uh, introduce a smaller scale, a small kitchen at the entrance, uh, smaller rooms, uh, etc. Excellent, thank you. All right, next question. Do we have another question? I think we have probably time for one more question, I think. Okay, uh, last question. What did you find was the most important thing to keep in mind while making your changes? So what was the most important thing to keep in mind? Clubhouse Leon, what did you, uh, what did you, what was the most important thing for you while you were making all these changes? What is the one thing that kind of stuck you wanted to stick the through line through everything that you did yeah uh, we are all agree in, in the room the most important thing was uh, involving the members so we did that with multiple actions but we started from early with uh, we work on a day uh, weekly we are talking about the moving uh, then it's almost every day uh, with uh, with poles on the walls, uh, and uh, and and at the end, uh, most important thing when involving the people is that everyone has to come to the new place, mm -hmm. and that's still a pity. Today we have members that we don't see anymore. We yeah, not much, uh, two or three, but we we notice that. Chaque, chaque semaine, on avait une, une visite. Yeah. So maintaining that community, that's great. And Gateway, what was your the thing you wanted to stick through most importantly through everything? Um, absolutely doing it together. Yeah. Um, every part of the process together. Um, and, and then just the, the importance of it, reminding ourselves of why this matters. Um, and I, I, Every clubhouse, I'm sure you've heard people say, members say, the clubhouse didn't just change my life, it saved my life. Yeah. And when we thought of it in the context of how important this was for us, for our clubhouse community, um, it wasn't just about a pretty space, it was about transformation. Um, and then the second thing was persistence throughout the process, because it was a long process and it, you know, 
it, we were very intentional and um, what, as we were doing fundraising, uh, there was one major donor who our board president invited for about a year to come for a tour of Gateway because we knew if he came and met us, met our members, saw what was happening, he would be inspired. After about a year, he finally came. Um, and then he had to have some other people on his team come for a tour. And then we waited for several months, but we kept pursuing. And then he became a major donor um, to our capital campaign. So just persistence also at, at knowing that it's it's worth it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, that, that wraps up this, the Q&A. And um, I want to thank... Clubhouse Leon and Gateway. Um, I think this has been uh, this has been wonderful for me. Uh, I'm thinking creatively about you know collaboration and sort of maintaining that sense of community. And I think that's what we hope that participants are getting out of this about the the folks that are here with us today. That the that this generates productive discussion in your communities um, and uh, and gets you thinking creatively and get you sort of thinking about how you can always maintain that sense of community. Um, so, yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you to all of our presenters today. If we have not answered your question, please send an email to Wana webinar at fountainhouse.org. The recording will be made available next week on our Wana webinar series YouTube channel. Please take a moment to fill out the short survey that will appear once you leave the event. Thank you for joining today's webinar, and please be on the lookout for announcements regarding our future webinars.